Welcome to Virtual City Hall. I'm a little bit sad that City Hall is closed, but happy I can bring you some people and some connections through Virtual City Hall School. So today I'm visiting Ward 6, where I found Councillor McKean. Hello, everybody. I'm very informally dressed. Hope you don't mind. And I've also got student reporter Sonora with me. So just before I turn the interview over, I just want to explain what counselors do, because some of you might not know that. At City Hall School, we learn that counselors listen, learn, and decide. And the decisions that they make are the ones that give us such a great quality of life. So Councillor McKean, uh, he told us that his favorite subject in school was English, and that led him actually to be a reporter. He worked for the Edmonton Journal for many years. And uh, he thinks it's kind of great that today he gets to be interviewed by a reporter, a student reporter. So Sonora, I'm gonna turn it over to you to ask him his questions. Go ahead. The first question is, what is the most rewarding part of your work? You know, this sounds really overly simple, but when a constituent, which is someone who lives in the ward that I represent, when somebody contacts us and they have a problem and we're able to work that out for them and, and they're happy about that, that is, that is a really good day because when at City Hall, things take a long time to get done. So it's those little quick response uh, situations where we can help somebody. Those are really fulfilling. Yeah. The second question is, what's the biggest challenge? Well, I, I think that uh, I would give the issue of homelessness has been a real challenge for myself and my office because this ward, Ward 6, which is sort of the greater downtown, yeah. hosts a lot of the homelessness in Edmonton. Yeah. And, and those people ended up homeless uh, really through fate and luck, by bad luck, I mean. The family they were born into, the perhaps somewhat the genetics uh, they were uh, given, and um, and then the circumstances in their life, they weren't given a chance. And so we need to give them a chance with proper housing and supports so they can live in dignity and health. And um, so that's that's my biggest challenge, and it's really a it's a haunting challenge. And I just but I just think if all Canadians knew why people were homeless and knew the extent of homelessness, they would demand politicians fix that because Canadians are compassionate, kind people. Ma, the fourth question is, what three words would you describe a great leader? Yeah, I. so first of all, I would say uh, humble. I think that's a really important part of being a great leader because it suggests you're the kind of person that um, doesn't think they have all the answers. No one human being has all the answers. The second one I would use, so humble, then compassionate. I think it's really important that elected officials, politicians, be focused on their community and the people in their community rather than focused on themselves and their own ego and their career and how what a big deal they are. They're not a big deal. They're just folks trying to, if they're doing this right, they're trying to help their community be healthier and safer and more vibrant. It's not about them. And so the third one, um, I'm going to use listener. I thought of open-minded, that's kind of cheating, that's two words, but a listener or a learner. I, if you listen really well, if you're a good listener in life, that means like with humility, you're willing to, um, you're willing to listen to the opinions and the facts presented to you and make the best decision you can. Um, uh, we see some politicians who are obviously really good speakers, orators, and and that's a wonderful trait to uplift a community or lead uh, uh, a strategy. But 
at the start, elected officials need to be really good listeners. So humility, compassion, listener. Those are the three words. The other question is, during this time of isolation, what brings you joy? Uh, probably playing my guitar. That would be one thing. But I'll tell you the thing that, yeah, honestly, I have three wonderful women who work in my office, at typically at City Hall, not right now. So every morning we have a video conference to talk about issues and how we're responding to constituent concerns or an upcoming um, agenda with council that we have to worry about. But somewhere in there, uh, somebody's picking up somebody else and making us laugh. Yeah. And even virtually, you can have, if you know those people, you can have, well, maybe even if you don't, you can have some wonderful connections with people. And I love my staff, like they're fantastic. So having an opportunity to join with them every day, sometimes twice a day, because we need we need it, That's that brings me joy. Yeah. The other question is, there are so many caring citizens in our city. Tell us about some of the Yay Cares examples you've seen in your ward. Well, you know, that's... I saw this question ahead of time, and I know there's people doing amazing things, um, amazing donations, um, people, neighbors helping neighbors, that sort of thing. One of the things I love at this time of year is knowing that there are people out there picking up litter. Yeah. And my office staff did that on two occasions with a bunch of other people doing it as well. And, you know, when we when we get an opportunity to go outside uh, out of our isolation boy it's nice if the if the outdoors is clean you know you're not running into stacks of garbage and so um that knowing that people are out there doing that somebody sent me a a photo of somebody on their front street just out there picking litter by themselves just doing it as probably out of that sense of they're stuck indoors, they want to get outside, they want to do something because maybe they're not at work, they want to contribute to their community. And that is, I think, one of the most important values we can try to pass along to your generation. There's nothing better than feeling like you contributed to the community because that means other people are safe and healthy and happy. And you know what? Uh, I've said this in other uh, classes I've spoken to, life is done with mirrors. And what that means is what we put out, kindness, compassion, love, that tends to get reflected back to us by life. So that is something that always inspires me, single, small acts of community building and community kindness are just lovely. And the last question is, what do you hope we all learn or take away from this experience? And what advice would you give or would you have for our children like me? So we live in a time and perhaps in a place that really stresses individual achievement. That it's all about success is all about us individually. And I think if we're learning something from the pandemic, it's that our success depends on everyone else. So my health depends on people being careful uh, if they go to the grocery store or maybe they don't go to the grocery store because they got a sniffle and, and they think they might have COVID. We rely on our healthcare workers. Obviously that's been driven really home, but there's the police and the firefighters and the paramedics and, the grocery store workers who are putting food on the shelves, there's all kinds of people out there at some level of risk. We don't survive. We don't succeed without a community lifting us up. So I'm hoping that's what comes out of this is more recognition of how we are all interconnected and connected and that we express that more, our appreciation for that in 
in, in the way we talk, in the way we donate money, all sorts of things, just a recognition that uh, a city is more than a name or a bunch of asphalt or buildings. It's about all these people living together. And if we look after each other and are kind to each other, we will have the most amazing city you could imagine. It's not about the climate. Yeah, it's cold here sometimes. It's not about the tall buildings. That's not really what uh, makes a place special. What makes a place special is the way people treat each other. And Edmontonians are already really good at that. And I think we're going to come out of this uh, with one of, uh, I think, the most connected, loving, kind, compassionate, listening, humble city <laughs> of them all. That's my hope. <laughs> Nice. That's awesome. Well, thank you both for that interview. I think it was kind of cool that Sonora got to do some primary source research in that interview. And that brings me to the challenge for today. I'd like to end each episode with a challenge. So I'm wondering if you could make a family newspaper. Maybe there's some sports that you're doing or entertainment or some cooking that you're trying. Maybe you want to, someone wants to do the comics. Or perhaps you want to work with your teacher and create a class newspaper. It would be interesting for each student to contribute something that's going on and become a journalist. So that's my challenge for you. Do become a reporter, ask some questions, be like Sonora, do it in person with people in your house or virtually. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, Councillor McKean. Thank you. Everybody take care. Bye, Sonora. Be safe.